Hey guys, this is Kaizen here, and today I'm going to give you some starting tips and tricks for the FTP Beyond mod pack. Okay guys, so before we get into anything in this video, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, I'm about to put on screen a little information card that will show you at which point in the video different topics are covered. So if you're coming back to revisit and you want to skip on to something, then it will give you the uh, minutes and seconds of where that will start. The other thing to mention is throughout this tutorial, you will see that I am running a texture pack. The uh, link to that will be in the video description if you want to use it. Uh, but let's get into some very basic fundamentals to start us off. And that is a few things uh, that you can see here behind me, which are all these different colored beacons. Now, if I press the period button, the full stop for you English people, and I go over here to my waypoints, these are all the waypoints that I have made. So I've got home, obviously that's where my base is. I've listed some slime islands because they will come in handy and I'll come on to that later. Splash is my friend on the server um, and also my brother, fun fact. <laughs> so all different things here that I needed. I needed cows early, I could probably remove that one now and all of this good stuff. Now just to note, I'm op on the server, you guys will not be able to teleport to them. Uh, that's something I can potentially do as an op, uh, but you can set them. So the way to set them, you can either press period, go over here to waypoints and press new. And it will start at your current location. You can change this if you want, and you can name it whatever you want up here. Uh, the other way to do it is it's automatically hotkeyed to the comma. So if you press comma, it'll go straight into the screen and you can set that up. Very useful when you're starting off to know where the spawn is and where your home is, and perhaps some useful resources for later on in the game. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is a very useful item when you're out exploring, and that is this thing, the sleeping bag. So you see the, the recipe for it, just three wool and two carpet, you get yourself a sleeping bag. Now, what you can do is take this with you, and unlike a bed, which is like a permanent structure, you can go around and sleep with the sleeping bag when it gets to nighttime. You'll see down in the bottom right-hand corner, it says the time of day. At 6.32 p.m., it changes from day to night. That's when you can sleep to uh, sort of maximize the uh, spawning of mobs being as little as possible. Uh, now, the, spawning, uh, the sleeping bag, I should say, will not reset your spawn when you go around, so you can travel around with it, sleep with that, and not reset your spawn, which is pretty handy. And one final thing for the fundamentals is once you get coal, one very useful thing to maximize your coal early game is put it into any sort of crafting grid and get this stuff, this tiny coal. Now, a tiny coal can be used in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, if you have a stick and a tiny coal, you can make tiny torches. So you can use those to light up your caves or your base or whatever when you're starting out. Pretty useful little tool to have. The other thing it could be used for, you see here I've got a load of tiny coal in my furnace here. Basically, what that will do is if I just want to smelt like one item, I can chuck that in. And this will smell, it will use one tiny coal per item, so it maximizes the efficiency, which early game can be quite useful. Next up, guys, we have something that is very fun and very useful. It is the hang glider. You can see here, I'm flying around my island, and if I hold down shift, whilst I'm using it, I go even faster. Now this, in conjunction with a couple of other items, is a great way to explore early game. And if I drop off my hang glider, which I do by right clicking, you'll see I'm bouncing around here. I don't take any fall damage. So how did I do that? Well, with these slime boots here. So these three items here, the slime boots, the slime sling, and the hang glider are super useful. So let's have a little look at those. Now, the reason I actually uh, listed some slime islands on my waypoints was so I can make this stuff up. Um, if we open up uh, this grid here, type in R what's hovering over, it gives you the recipe for slime boots. We can do the same for the slime sling, a little bit stringy for that as well. Um, and basically, if we put the boots on, once you're wearing the sling, if you hold down right click, you can jump around using the sling and the boots. And if you hold it down a heck of a lot until it goes to full and you shoot yourself right up in the air, you can then right click on your hang glider and be flying around. So it's fantastic for early game exploration. You will see a lot of the world very, very quickly. Now let's get down here a second. Just to say with the slime boots, if I did want to just fall, I could hold shift and I'll fall, but I will then take full damage. But sometimes can be useful because you're sort of floating around everywhere. Uh, so if you look at a glider, uh, this is the glider here that I'm using from Open Gliders. So you can see here you need one of these things. So a little bit of iron is required and two wings. And that's the recipe for that wing. And that's the recipe for that wing. So a little bit of leather and some sticks is all you really need. A little bit of iron. You've got your glider. The slime, so it's just slime. So pretty simple to make. 
Now, one thing to note, slime islands, for those who don't know, they are way up in the air. So if you're going to go and explore one, make sure you take lots of blocks with you. You could take something like sand or gravel, and then when you're done, you could remove the tower using a torch at the bottom. Uh, however you do it, it's up to you, but you're going to want to go up there and get the slimes to make up these items. It will make your exploring early game way, way better. So now that I'm done with my slime boots and glider and all that sort of stuff, I want to open up my backpack. You can see there's already some goodies in here and put them away. So all I did there is I've hotkeyed an iron backpack. So if I press N right now, you see the backpack comes back to me here. Uh, if I were to press N again, it disappears. It goes into a, a virtual slot. You can see that it's actually on my back, <laughs> which is kind of cool. And then at the moment, I've got it set to B to open it. Now, what I will show you guys is a couple of things. First of all, if you go into your controls and you search backpack, uh, here we go. You see there, to equip it, I've got it as N. And to open, I've set it as B. You can change these around if you want. Uh, I'm not sure if these are default or not. I think I may have changed them, but just you can search and find that out. Uh, so that's how you do that. Now, if I press N whilst I'm hovering over anything other than the backpack, nothing happens. You need to be holding the backpack for it to happen. It goes into storage and you press B there to access it. B again, uh, sorry, escape to close it. Uh, N again to get it back like that. Uh, so if we look at the iron backpack, I will show you the recipe for that. Uh, so here we go. If you go on here, you go across here, you can see you need a bit of iron and a chest and also a basic backpack. So mine's uh, kind of an upgraded version. You can just make a basic one using just a bit of leather uh, and uh, chest and some wool. Uh, so useful early game items to get leather and wool in particular. You see they've already come up in a couple of recipes. And that will give you a basic backpack, which is good enough for early game. But as soon as you get iron, you want to upgrade it because it's very simple to do. So we were just talking about the usefulness of having leather and wool early game. You'll see I've got a bit of a farm going on down there, and I'd highly recommend you get this set up as soon as possible. If we go in here for a second and go at PAMS, you'll see there is a ton of different food options that you guys can use. Now, if you're looking for a recommendation of an early game food, toast is the one that's generally accepted to be pretty good. If we hover over it, you'll see their toast will give you three and a half hunger and a ton of saturation. So it's pretty good because it's also very easy to make. All you need is bread, which is just the normal vanilla recipe, in a grid with bakeware, which is just eight bricks. And again, pretty easy to get early game, all this stuff. And you'll get a ton of toast that you can use. Uh, however, I also got a lot of animals herding here. And in particular, you want to get cows and sheep, in my opinion, for the leather and wool. I personally like to have all of them uh, because it gives you more options with pams. Chickens, obviously, you've got the eggs and the feathers as well. So there's advantages to having them all. Now, you see at the moment, I'm just sort of farming these animals in a very vanilla way. I mean, early game, that's really going to be your only option because you're not going to have power and stuff set up to make the things you need to make. I would say it's better to get on with this as soon as possible. You see there, and then we've got my sugar cane. I'm farming all the essentials. The sugar cane and wheat is the essentials. The carrots really are for the pigs. Uh, but I would say you want to get into that pretty early on as it is pretty useful. Now, one other thing to show you guys is in my baubles here, I have a gluttony charm. Now, I highly recommend getting this. This is not something you have to do. It's just my personal recommendation. The recipe for it is reasonably simple. The only difficult thing being the golden apple. But of course, you can make them or find them. Uh, and the wheat and string obviously is fine. Now, what that does is if we go and equip that back into our baubles and we have a little run around here. I actually opened my backpack up to get some food out, so I'm going to need that. So I'm going to run around until I get a little bit hungry, and then you'll see what happens. All right, guys, didn't take long. I am hungry. So right now, I'm just going to literally feather the right-click button whilst holding the pork chop, and there we go, eaten that quickly. Now, of course, you know, it's, as I say, it's not essential, but the mobs in this game, particularly if you're playing on hard mode and you're doing lots of caving and lots of time in the nether, can be pretty tricky. So if you can just right-click and hold it down and go from being, you know, down here on the hunger bar to way up there on the hunger bar, uh, you are going to find uh, that it's going to really help you with your combat. So I'd recommend that you get one of those. Okay, guys, the next thing I'm going to show you is super useful if you're playing on a multiplayer server, but it is also useful if you're playing single player. So let's get into why that is. If you open up your inventory here, the first thing you want to do is create a team. So I've created my team. I'm Team Kaizen. It allows you to create a color, and I've chosen red for my team. Pretty straightforward. You guys will figure that out. The fun part is here on the claim chunks. So you see here, everything red is mine. So this is wilderness. It's just normal ocean. This is my island, of course. And the red stuff is where I've claimed chunks. So I just did that. And what that does is it protects my island. And by default, it means that explosions are disabled. So if a creeper explodes anywhere within here, it will still damage me, but it will not blow up a big hole. That's pretty useful. Now, this little red lined area here is uh, chunk loaded. So this is where all my farms and things are. And basically, that means that even if I'm offline, these will keep running as long as the server is running. Or if I'm out of range where they would normally be loaded from, they'll still run, even if as long as I'm online, uh, if, it's a, if it's a single player, and if anybody, uh, well, if the server is running on multiplayer. So if I want to claim this chunk here, all I do is left click. If I want it to be chunk loaded, I shift left click. 
And if I want to get rid of it, I right click. It's that simple guys, but on a server this is super useful. It will prevent people from stealing your goods or griefing your land or entering your chest. Definitely something you want to get set up pretty soon. So this smeltery right here has been behind me the whole time and many of you will recognize it of course as the Tinker Smeltery, but I couldn't not include it in a video like this. It is super important for your early game tools and weapons to get into Tinkers as soon as you can. Uh, now you are given this book in the game, Materials and Use. If you're not familiar with Tinkers, I suggest you have a little look through there. It'll teach you everything that you need to know really. Um, but you definitely want to get your smeltery set up as soon as possible, along with all of these things. And I have a toolforge here. Now, I don't know if this is just a bug on my end or what's going on, but this was not in my JEI. If I search toolforge, this is what comes up, and it's a super complex recipe, which is absolutely not necessary. If I go to a crafting bench here, and I put my iron blocks in there, three of those along there, and one of those along there, that will give me a normal tool forge. It's way simpler than this recipe right here. So guys, if you're having this problem, try this out. It should work for you too. You will get yourself a tool forge. Uh, definitely useful to have. Now, uh, actually, it could do with sleeping. So I'm sleeping bag right here. I can show you guys how this works. Just right click with it. There I go. I'm off to sleep. <laughs> um, so really, as far as tinkers and stuff goes, there's loads of tutorials out there and a lot of people know how to use it. I'm not going to go into that too much in this episode other than to say you should definitely look to get it and to mention the recipe. One thing I will say that can be quite useful is if I go around the back here, because uh, I'm on an island, there's not a lot of lava around. If you're in an area that's the same, if you make up one of these iron drums, go find yourself a big lava pool and you can just get buckets and take it from the lava pool into the iron drum. Then you'll have a lot of lava, not just to power this, but lava for your island. Now I'm running that into there with a transfer mode and transfer pipes from extra utils too. Uh, the other thing about having lava around is generally you're always going to be able to get water because you obviously two buckets, you've got the infinite source. Uh, what you can do is you can put water and lava in through one of these things that doesn't have a faucet on it. So one of the drains and it's got a hole there. Uh, if you put in one water bucket and one lava bucket, it will make obsidian and you can then pour that out into your casting basin. Just a quick little tip there if you didn't know that early way an early way, early game way, I should say, of getting obsidian. All right, guys, two very quick tips coming at you now. Number one, ender pearls. You will need them. In the early game, they're going to be quite useful and you're not going to have many of them. So if you see an enderman, you may want to try and fight it. Now, of course, they are difficult to beat and you don't want to die and lose all your stuff. But if you're near where you're going to respawn or if you think you can take him, go for it. You need to get ender pearls, guys. If you have the opportunity, go for it. Another little thing uh, that I find quite useful is having a project board to remind myself what I was working on and also list the materials that I need. Because in modded, you know, you need one thing and you need like 10 other things to get it, right? So I put them all on here. And one little tip I want to show you with signs, if I right click this sign, I can edit it and add to it or remove from it. So it's quite a useful little tip right there. You can put all your signs on this board and just right click when you want to change them or cross things off if you've got them. Uh, you know, again, completely optional, but for me, I do find that it helps. So one thing you guys are definitely going to want to get into early, in my opinion, is storage. Modded gets very messy very quickly and having all your things where you know where they are, I just find it to be a huge help. So behind me here, you'll see we've got these storage crates and I have these little labels on the front. So I'm just going to go through, first of all, the recipe of them. So a storage crate, you'll see here there are three tiers, small, medium and large. This is what a small one holds. A medium holds twice that and a large three times. You make up a small storage crate. This is what you need. Basically, a lot of wood. Uh, so that's it. Just get loads of wood. You can make up loads of these things. Uh, as far as the labels go, if I just type in here, label, uh, you'll see they come in the different colors of wood. And to make those up, pretty simple. So wood early game, you definitely want to get as much of that as you can. Kind of like any sort of Minecraft game. Uh, I would recommend the storage crates uh, being the way to go. Of course, you don't have to use the labels. You could use signs or you could use nothing. Uh, it's just my little preference. I kind of like the visual of that. Uh, now, a useful little tip, because you might have all your storage stored up and then go, oh, I actually want to move. Well, that's actually not a problem. What you need is one of these things, a storage crate keeper. Here is the recipe for it. Now, the only thing there that may look a little bit out of your reach is black quartz. But if you click on it, you'll see that with a coal and a nether quartz, you get black quartz. So it's not that tricky to get. You know, you just need to get yourself to the nether. Now, what you do with one of these things is you open it up, uh, your storage crate. You put the storage crate keeper in here. And if I had that in there, I could then delete this chest. It would retain all its items and I could go put it down somewhere else. And when I put it down somewhere else, the items will be retained in the order they were in there, just as things were before. However, you will lose the storage crate key each time you do that. So you're going to need one for each chest that you want to move. But, you know, it's certainly a lot better than having to put all that in your inventory and, cart, you know, potentially thousands of blocks to wherever it is that you're moving. Now, this lonely, unimpressive looking set of machines right here is more useful than you may think. This is a basic Ender IO setup. Now, we're just doing early game tips today. You will get way more into Ender IO as you progress through this pack for sure. However, I would suggest that when you start out, this is what you need. A sterling generator in the middle of a sag mill and an alloy smelter. 
in the middle because then it powers them both without needing any type of conduit. And basically the sag mill is going to open up a whole load of new items to you that you are going to need to progress through. And the uh, alloy smelter is basically going to do the same. You can alloy metals to get new metals that you are going to need. Another lonely set of machines that I have here that I'd recommend to you guys is to get yourself a coal generator from Actually Additions because you're going to do a lot of mining early game. Getting coal should not be too much of a problem. It's probably a good way to get your early game power. And use that to power a redstone furnace. I find it's going to be quite helpful because what you can do is use your coal to power that furnace very quickly, smelt up items. Sometimes you've got, a, you just need a couple of items or something and waiting for these smelteries uh, or furnaces, I should say, can be a bit tedious. Uh, you can also auto output with this. So if you go into here, this configuration tab will look like that. Once you open it up, you'll see here, basically, uh, orange is output, blue is input. So right now, as I look at the machine, the right-hand side is set to output. Incidentally, this right here is the back of the machine. So it's a little bit confusing, but that's what that is, in case you're wondering what that one does. Because that sets orange on the right-hand side, it means that on the right-hand side where my chest is, items will auto-output into there. Just a useful little thing to get you going if you need those items smelted up quickly. So guys, all of what I do in the early game in a pack like this is geared towards getting a quarry. I rush getting a quarry. I think that is absolutely what you should do too. And I'll explain why in a second when we go look at it. But this structure behind me is something you are going to need. So we're going to just go have a look at how you get one of these. So portal frames are what you want. So if we search those here in JEI, the portal frames are made like this. Now you'll see you need a mining multi-tool along with some stone bricks. The mining multi-tool is made as this. So not too bad, right? A stick, a stone pick, flint steel, a couple of stone bricks, you're there. Now, what you need is the same as a nether portal. So basically, these blocks of iron in the four corners are not necessary. You could use any block or, or not, uh, but basically there they are. That's the structural blocks that you need. Um, so once you've got them all together, the way that you light it is to use this mining multi-tool that you'll have and right-click as you would with a flint steel. Now, if I jump in here, nothing happens unless I shift. When I shift, it takes me to a whole new dimension. Now, if we walk over here a little bit, I can show you guys what's happening in this dimension. I have set up over here a quarry, and it's a big quarry. Now, to do that, I'm not going to go into the full setup of how this goes. If you guys want that, then feel free to ask. There are videos and, and Reddits and things out there to help. Now, the way I've done this, just to quickly run through what I think is the best way, I've got solar power going on. Solar produces a decent amount of power in the early game. You know, it's a good amount of resources to power, particularly when you're starting out. Of course, at night time, it's not going to work. But to be honest, guys, you're going to get so many items from this, I don't think it's going to matter. I've had this up and running just for like a few hours, and you can see the sort of items I've got. I mean, if we look at the big items, 14 diamonds and one emerald, you know, if I leave this running overnight, I'm just going to be so set. It's a really useful thing to have. Um, so basically what that is, is a builder block from RF Tools. I've got the storage filter to tell me what I'm going to use and not use, and a shape clearing card right there. It's being powered, as I say, with the solar. I've got these simple power cells from RF Tools, connected one from under here to over to here. Um, and again, all this stuff you can find online, but if you want more help, feel free to ask. And then I've just got these drawers and drawer controllers, because I find them to be quite useful. So guys, once you've rushed this quarry, you're going to have an abundance of all of this stuff. And it just means that progressing through the rest of the game is going to be super, super simple, which to me makes perfect sense. Because from here, I've now got options. I can do whatever I want to do. Uh, one little incidental thing, if you're wondering how I've got these numbers to show up here, because they will not do it by default, so I can see at a glance what's in each one. All you need for that is what's called a quantity key. They're not too difficult to make. Basically, you need a book and a draw key. A draw key is made as thus and you need an upgrade template to make that, sticks in a drawer. So pretty simple to make, quite useful. You can get other keys as well. Again, this isn't a storage or tutorial, so I mean, you guys can have a look into that. I'm just showing you and giving you advice on what I would do, which would be to rush the quarry. So guys, that is it. Just a very quick video on how you can get off to a very good start on the FTB Beyond pack. Now, I do have a patron server currently running. Uh, I will be doing competitions from time to time to give away free places, or for just a dollar, you can join that and also my vanilla server that I run. Uh, all that information will be down in the description, or you feel free to ask me a comment. Guys, I hope this video helped. I hope you found it enjoyable and hopefully learned a tip or two from it. If you did, then please do hit the like button and consider subscribing. It is greatly appreciated. But for this video, that is about it. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I was about to end this video and then I remembered something that would be super cool that I probably should put in here. Especially on multiplayer, this tip's awesome. Uh, if we open up our chat here, we can emote and you get all these different things you can do. I'll let you try them out for yourself. The only one I'm going to do is wave goodbye. Bye, guys. <laughs>